All right, welcome to today's lesson on advanced flowcharting, where we're going to be looking at how to use repetition structures in our code. So if we remember from our previous flowcharting lessons, we know that flowcharts are used to give a graphical preview of the program, and they have the following signs. So you've got an oval for starting and ending, an arrow to show the flow of the program, a rectangle to show process, a parallelogram to show input and output, and finally, a diamond shape to show decisions. And we can use all those symbols to make simple programs that allow for some sort of choice and selection in the direction that we go in our program and to show the general flow of our programs. However, we have to figure out what we're going to do if the user wants to do something over and over again, right? If they want to do something multiple times, how are you going to do that without having to write the code over and over and over again? Especially if you don't know the number of times you want to do something. So we do that using what we call repetition structures. So a repetition structure is a point in the program where two values are compared. So basically, this is the same thing that we saw when we did selection structures. It's very, very similar. We're going to compare two values, and based on the comparison, we're either going to flow the execution back to a previous point in our program or continue on to something new. So again, very similar to selection structures. We have two things that might happen, but in this case, the difference is that one of those things means that we might go backwards to a previous point in our program, whereas in selection structures, both of our options went on to something new. So it looks like the same sort of thing that we saw when we did selection structures, right? We have our flow coming into our selection here, and then we have our condition. So if they want to continue and move on, or they want to do it again, for example, if they want to do something again, they would come here to this true, and this error would go back to some previous section of the code that was written before. Whereas if it's false, we would go on maybe end the program here. So this way we have one direction that goes on to something new and one direction that goes backwards to something previous. Very similar to what we saw before. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to write a program that says hello to multiple users. So again, we're going to start. The first thing we need to do is input the user's name so we know who they are and then output the word hello and what their name was. At this point, we now need to ask a question of whether or not there is another user. So another input here. At, we then check if they have another user. So if they said yes, there is another user, we're going to go back. So this is the repetition piece here. We go back to a previous point in our program where we ask them what the username is, output it, say is there another one, and we can keep on doing this over and over and over again until they say no to this question, at which point we can go and end the program. Let's take a look at one more example. So in this case, we're going to do a countdown to a rocket ship launch. So we start and we say, okay, our countdown value is going to start at 10, because we usually go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? So our countdown value is at 10, and then we output what that value is. So we'll put 10, right? We then check, are we at 0 yet? As long as we're not at 0, I'm going to subtract 1 from my countdown value and output the new value. So 10, it's not 0, goes to 9, I'll put 9. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, <clears throat> and then we go 0, right? We open 0 and we go down here and say, okay, we're at 0 now. We say blast off and we end the program. That's it. That's all we have time for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.